Hey, what's up guys? I'm Lan here. Welcome back to a new video on my channel. So in this video, I'm going to talk about iOS 15.5 update on my iPhone 12. So as you can see, this is an iPhone 12. And yesterday night, I have received iOS 15.5 on my iPhone 12. So from the screenshot itself, as you can see, the update came around 660.8 MB on my iPhone 12. So if you're having any iPhone starting from iPhone 6s to iPhone 13 Pro Max, you should be able to have this update if you're using iOS 15. So in this video, let's have a look at this update and let's talk about what's new with this update and what are the new features that you are going to get if you update to iOS 15.5. So let's start the video. But before that, if you are new here and happen to enjoy this kind of videos on my channel, do give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Now, with that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, guys. So the first things first, let me go to the settings and let me go to the general and about section. If I tap on the software version, as you can see, the iOS version says 15.5 and the new build number is 19F77. And if you're coming from iOS 15.4.1, there's a modem firmware update that's also included. So as you can see, the new modem firmware is 2.54.02. Now, this number would vary from device to device since I'm using iPhone 12 so it's the modem firmware for my iPhone 12 if you are using any other iPhone probably iPhone 13 or iPhone 13 Pro Max it would be different for you so check for a modem firmware update along with this update now many people tell me that I am not getting iOS 15.5 updates so what you need to do you need to make sure that you are on iOS 15 so if you are on iOS 15, then go to general and about section and click on software updates. So if you check software updates there, you would be able to see iOS 15.5 update. Now that we are done talking about iOS 15.5 update details, let's talk about what's new with this update. So the first things first, I would like to mention about this weather application. So as you can see, this is the weather application. And if I tap on the weather application, it denotes uh, from this arrow that I'm currently staying in the city. Now, if I scroll down, as you can see, there's a, a separate box which says report an issue. It was there previously as well. It was just a text bar. Now it has been highlighted and has been represented with a box itself. Now you can click on the see more. And if you think that the data that you're seeing on the screen right now is inaccurate, you can actually report the correct data with this thing and click on submit. So then again, that's a new change. Apart from that, there is a change with the podcast application. So if you are someone who use Apple podcast application, so there is a new feature for you. So you need to go to the podcast. And as you can see, now it supports automatically downloaded episodes. And now it gives you the option to download either two, three or five latest episodes and all the other episodes that were previously downloaded that would be automatically deleted if you choose this option. So let's suppose if you choose to download five latest episodes, so previously downloaded episodes would be deleted automatically. Now there is one more thing that I wanted to talk about, but since I'm from India, it's not actually very useful over here. So if I talk about Apple wallet, so that's actually the biggest change with this update. Now if I click on Apple wallet, now it's just Apple cash. So previously it was Apple pay, but now from Apple pay, uh, you know, Apple has changed it to Apple Cash and for the countries where Apple Cash is available, you can make use of that. Apart from that, there are many features that has been, you know, uh, given to the developers for them to implement. For example, if you go to Safari, a key pass feature has been included. Let's suppose, you know, let me talk about first what key pass is, you know, if any website text in a credential like username or password for you to log in, then key pass would actually allow you to, you know, use your face ID or authentication methods like that so that it becomes easy for you if you log into that particular website multiple times. But it again depends on developers to developers and also which website you are going to. So if a website supports key pass or if the developer plan to implement the key pass, they can now with iOS 15.5. So these were the features and some of the new changes I was able to find with iOS 15.5 talking about not a lot of changes because iOS 16 is really coming. So no UI changes or something like that you could probably expect at this point of time. But now let's have a look at the battery life. 
I know many people are concerned about the battery life and so let's have a look at the battery life. So before we take a look at the battery graph and all let me click on the battery health. So my battery health is 93%. I've been using this iPhone 12 for almost a year now and it supports peak performance capability. Now if I go down as you can see yesterday night I have you know done the update and before that as you can see if I take an example of yesterday I have used my phone around 70% and for that I have gotten a screen on time of 4 hour 39 minutes and screen off time of 37 minutes and you know it's similarly it's just like that for last 10 days if I tell you the screen on and screen off time is in front of you so it's not good it's not bad it gets me through a day for most of the people that what I have received the feedback is iOS 15.4.1 or iOS 15.5 the battery life was okay okay it's hit or a miss for some people some people always complain me that the battery life is not that great they are you know facing heating issues stuff like that but for me iOS 15.4.1 even and even you know after updating to iOS 15.5 I'm hoping the battery life would be kind of similar or you know it would be improving in terms of battery life now talking about one more thing people were concerned about the iPhone storage issue so let me go to the general and click on iPhone storage so previously what was happening you know once you uh, click on the iPhone storage once it gives you the correct representation of the all the applications that are taking and you know consuming data and if you just scroll down you know the system data was taking a large chunk of amount so as you can see it quickly loaded and first of all it takes time if you are opening it for the first time and as you can see it is consuming 9.69 GB so this can over time change you know if you are using a different device or depends on how many applications you have installed or for how many times you have used different browsers so the browser cache everything would be kind of stored in this system data so it can vary but you no know, ideally speaking if you have been using an iPhone for almost a year it should be between somewhere I know 5 to 10 GB so that's what as you can see for me it is 9.68 GB but then again nothing you need to specially worry about this because this would actually be taken taken care by the iOS system you don't have to do anything about that so then again I think so iOS storage issue has been solved for most of the people and also one more thing I wanted to you know tell you that you know people have complained about the iPhone heating issues so since I released my previous video it was about iOS 15.4.1 people have commented on that video as well they are facing heating issues as well so to be honest I use this as my daily driver and I never faced heating heating issues but of course there are scenarios the phone would be kind of heated up if you continuously use the phone for you know for voice calls or video calls or things like that in extreme scenarios and depending on the weather condition if you are on India or any other countries there would be a possibility that your phone would be heated up normally but you know in all the cases my phone doesn't heat up all the time so that's what I just wanted to let you know but then again that's it for this video I hope you have enjoyed this video and you know iOS 15.5 should be a great update and not only just it provides you with the features it also gives you the security updates which Apple has specifically mentioned on their website as well so if you are using iOS 15.4.1 this update should be must for you and with the you know upcoming iOS 16 updates next month starting with the beta I'm really excited to see iOS 16 as well I would be you know publishing many more videos regarding iOS 16 so if you're still new on my channel and happen to enjoy this kind of videos and enjoying the video right now then definitely you know consider subscribing to the channel it would give me a lot of motivation for me to make more of this kind of videos so then again that's it for this video and I will see you on my next video bye